The best thing to look forward to after a long day of work is grabbing the Nintendo Switch and indulging in a beautiful JRPG, don't you agree? And luckily, we have so many to look forward to in 2023. Hello, you gorgeous human being, it's Miss Bubbles. In this video, Taylor from The Gaming Shelf and I are gonna share with you the top JRPGs coming to the Nintendo Switch, along with a couple of picks that you can play right now. Don't forget to share the JRPGs you are looking forward to the most, squish that like button to smack the algorithm rhythm right in the face and without further ado let's get started so let's begin with some of the jrpgs that you can play right now and i'm gonna go first with rise of three this is one of the cutest jrpgs that will also surprise you with its story the main gameplay loop is engaging in real-time combat which is super fun to learn you can also explore the world to gather resources and then go back to your hut to use your cauldron to synthesize new weapons armor gathering tools and items to use in battle this follows the events of the previous two games but you can just do what I do and usually just watch a YouTube video to recap. But I have to say, the cast of characters might be worth your while to start from the start. Wait, start from the start what? Anyways, check out Ryza 3 if you're interested in it. Another game that was released this year and I got a chance to play it on stream with you guys was Trials to Azure. This is a sequel to Trials from Zero which I did not play, but the game does a really good job breaking down the stories and characters. With my short time with it, its story kept me on my toes with plot twists coming left and right, and the graphics brought me back to the 3DS which usually makes me feel very cozy, bubbly and nostalgic. Combat follows an active time style which was pretty interesting to familiarize myself with, I don't know why that was so hard to say, and with the different status effects to manage and fun abilities to try out, there's a lot for you to explore here. I know many of my community members adore this game, so definitely take a look at it. The third JRPG that I tried out this year is Fire Emblem Engage. Based on my time with this one, I feel like it's the perfect game for someone who likes to focus on story and only combat and does not like the slice of life elements found in Fire Emblem Three Houses. If you don't know, combat follows the strategy route and you can learn to use Emblem Rings, which you can eventually engage with to use at full capacity to gain access to unique skills, weapons, and attacks. I want to play more of this one, but I must admit, I keep worrying about the difficulty level spikes so if you've played it and maybe have some tips and tricks that you can share with me definitely share them in the comment section all right taylor hit us with your top picks that we can play right now two of the best jrpgs of all time persona 3 portable and persona 4 golden are now on switch and they're better than ever they run at 60 frames per second have higher resolution not to mention the fact that it's also portable and you can play it on your tv now if you're somehow unfamiliar with the persona franchise they are turn-based rpgs where you split your time between living the the life of a Japanese high school student, and then exploring dungeons and fighting monsters. Overall, these games have a very fun and addictive game loop. If for some reason you haven't played either game yet, there's never been a better time. Labyrinth of Galleria The Moon Society is a fantastic dungeon crawler from Nippon Ichi, the developer of the Disgaea series. In the game, you explore dungeons in a first-person perspective and fight in turn-based combat. Now, if you've played a dungeon crawler before, this one might be really unique to you because it has a lot of unique mechanics that I've never seen before. You can break through walls, yeah, pretty much any wall, you can just bust through it and explore to your heart's content. You can jump over gaps, you can swim underwater, and much more. And what's really cool is you can build your team in interesting ways. You pick your class, and then you can decide how they look, and there's multiple characters that you can put into one character slot. So even though it looks like it only gives you like maybe four or five, you could end up having like 12 characters in your party if you want, depending on how you fit it out. Now, I typically don't play dungeon crawlers, but I played this earlier this year, and I really enjoyed my time with it, and I think you will too. Octopath Traveler 2 is arguably the best RPG of 2023 so far. It evolves and builds on the series formula of having eight characters with different stories as they slowly intertwine with each other and you go through their different chapters, and here you ultimately culminate in something a little bit more cohesive at the end. And this HD 2D art style looks better than ever, in particular at night when you're walking around and there's lanterns and even some opportunities to go in the water, it just looks so cool. The same great turn-based combat is back, but this time they've added some unique super moves for each character character to give them some unique flair. If you love turn-based JRPGs, Octopath Traveler 2 is an absolute must-buy. One of the more unique games on this list is Mato Anomalies. It's a detecting the war game with some turn-based combat mixed in. For some of the game, you'll be exploring the city of Mato, solving mysteries and just talking to different characters, and then occasionally you'll jump into this separate dimension and do some dungeon crawling. Now, while the game does have some neat ideas and the story is pretty compelling, personally, I don't think it really came together in the end to make a super compelling game. If you're still curious about this game and want to try it out, I might wait for a sale. 
Now, the game that's out but I didn't get a chance to try out yet is Cassad Beasts. This is an open world turn based monster collecting game where you use a fusion system to combine two of the monsters you've captured to create a more powerful one. Some of the monster's abilities can be used in human form and that is perfect to explore this rich world to solve puzzles and locate dungeons. It already has overwhelming positive reviews on Steam with many saying it's one of the best games that gives you a feeling of coziness, nostalgia and delightfulness all at once. The publisher shared a Switch code with me so I'll be checking it out very soon. If you enjoy JRPGs that focus on the relationships you have with allies who are crucial to help you in combat, Loop 8 Summer of Gods is out and might actually interest you. This is a coming-of-age RPG set in a rural Japanese town in the 1980s. You play as a new arrival with a mysterious ability to loop time. You have one month to save the world and your decisions will shape the ending as you choose what you'll do every day. The importance of your decisions is really driving me into wanting to play this game, so I want to see what it's all about. I hear Taylor has a few more picks that you can play right now, so let's see what he has for us. To follow up to the 2021 Critical Darling, Fuga Melodies of Steel is out by the time this video releases, but probably shouldn't have released the same week as Zelda. Nonetheless, the sequel looks to follow up on what made the original great. Compelling storytelling, great strategic turn-based combat, and variety of other gameplay styles like talking with your team in your tank, and even some light dungeon crawling. Here in Fuga 2, there's some new features like a new ultimate weapon to do even more damage, a choice system that has ramifications in combat, and tougher story choices that will absolutely break your heart. Now, once you're all done with your adventures in Hyrule, I would definitely recommend checking out Fuga Melodies of Steel 2. It's a really fantastic game. One of my personal favorite DS slash 3DS era franchises was Etrian Odyssey, and it's making a return with remasters of the first three entries. Now, these are first person dungeon crawlers where you can customize your party from different classes to character portraits. And to me, the most addictive aspect of these games were drawing out the maps yourself on the bottom screen with the stylus. Now, I do feel like these remasters lose a little bit of that magic because it's not as easy to draw out those maps, you kind of have to pull up a separate menu, but with some visual and quality of life enhancements, I feel like you could still really enjoy this game and have a great time. If you've never gotten around to them, now would be a great time to do it. If you like the idea of becoming a school principal and being given some decision-making choices combined with turn-based combat, then Valtherian Arc Hero School 2 might be right up your alley. Not only will you customize and choose which buildings to add to your school, but you also have a dynamic world with different political factions to explore. Additionally, you have some mini-games like fishing, eating, and swimming competitions to partake. The game looks very cute, I'm not gonna lie, but the Steam reviews worry me a little bit. It's very mixed right now, so hopefully the Switch release will address them. Front Mission 2 and 3 remakes are coming this year. These are both classic strategy RPGs, but with mechs. Now, the first remake that came out last year was pretty solid and people seem to really enjoy it, with 2 probably being out by the time this video releases and 3 coming out later this year or maybe in early 2024. These remakes have new high-resolution visuals and plenty of cool quality of life features. Now, for me personally, I'm much more looking forward to 3 as that's the one I grew up on on the original PlayStation and the one I think most people are going to be excited about. So if you love mechs and strategy RPGs, you're definitely going to want to check these games out. If you're a longtime fan of this channel, you know what we're about here. So you bet I'm extremely excited to play Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life. I never got to experience the original one and this entry will be perfect for people like myself who want to, with quality of life improvements to enjoy. This is a farming life sim situated in the Forgotten Valley where the focus seems to be on the community as well as finding a partner and raising a child together. You will plant crops, raise barn animals, befriend villagers, and build facilities on your farm to name a few. Am I the only one who's excited about this? I don't think so. The Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie, the culmination of the past nine Trails games, yes you heard that right, into one mega crossover game is coming July 27th. Now in the game you can kind of bounce between three different protagonists, Reen Schwarzer from the Cold Steel games, Lloyd Bannings from the Crossbell games, and a mysterious new character named C. Now throughout the course of this game you'll have a giant roster of playable characters. I think I read some of that there's like 50 plus playable characters which is insane. Insane, not to mention a ton of other different gameplay between dungeon crawling, combat, and also plenty of minigames. Personally, I just want to explore Crossbell with some modern visuals. I think that would be so cool. And obviously, if you're a Trails fan, you're probably already in, as it seems like this is an absolute must-play for longtime fans of the series. 
I know many of my Discord members are hyped for Master Detective Archives Ring Code, and when you watch the trailers, you can't help but also get excited with them. This is a dark fantasy mystery adventure where you play as a trainee detective trying to get to the bottom of a spirit that is haunting him with the mysteries behind it. If you're a fan of the Danganronpa series, based on my understanding, you'll be right at home here. You'll meet an interesting set of cast members, use deduction to fight mystery phantoms and explore a neon drenched city of rain in a gorgeous 3D environment. I'm definitely picking this one up to see what it's all about. Okay, this next one is kind of weird. The Benza RPG. This looks like an RPG maker style game based on a Japanese web comedy series. This is about as niche as it gets. Personally, I had never heard of this series or this game before researching for this video, but hey, if you're into smaller, more experimental games, this might be one worth checking out. Atelier Mary is my most anticipated Nintendo Switch JRPG right after Fantasy Life. The premise is you play as Mary, who is failing her classes. So to graduate, she is given an atelier and you have to guide her to success. This is described as a leisure action RPG. So you need to gather resources, improve your alchemy skills, hire adventurers to help you out, and buy recipes. I really appreciate the unlimited mode that has been added here. I think it's perfect for people like myself who despise time limits in games. Also, how adorable are the character designs and animations? This will be such a fun experience to enjoy in July. Two games I thought would never make it outside of Japan are Rhapsody 2 and 3, but thanks to NIS America, they're making their way out west this August. These pair of turn-based RPGs are much more lighthearted in tone as they follow a princess and her mother getting into all kinds of misadventures. These remasters have been enhanced for modern consoles with updated visuals and full English voiceover, which is really cool. I think these look super charming and I really enjoyed Rhapsody a Musical Adventure. So if these look cool and you're looking for a more cozy, relaxing RPG experience, definitely consider checking these out. If you don't know about Sea of Stars, I don't know how that happened because the gaming community has been so hyped up for it and it's all for the right reasons. First, have you seen the pixel graphics in this game? Second, have you seen how engaging the combat system seems to be? There is also no random encounters, thank the lord, no transitions for combat, and no grinding, yes please. Plus, add the plethora of activities from fishing, cooking, sailing, and interacting with the world. This game looks absolutely beautiful, I don't know what else to say. Now one game I've had my eye on for a long time now is WrestleQuest. Imagine 90s era pro wrestling mashed together with a classic turn-based RPG and, well, you have WrestleQuest. It has this amazing pixel art style with some super cool animations and appearances from famous 90s era wrestlers like Macho Man Randy Savage, Andre the Giant, and much more. So if you've ever wanted to rise through the pro wrestling ranks via turn-based combat, then boy is WrestleQuest for you. Marvelous and Exceed are bringing us another remake this year, and if you love farming games with combat elements, then Rune Factory 3 Special should be on your radar. You play as Micah, a young human who can also transform into a sheep that is searching for a way to allow humans and monsters to coexist. You can enjoy the action combat presence here and then wrap up your day by farming, fishing, and finding someone special to marry. This is another fantastic game for people like myself who did not get the chance to play the original one. Do you like RPGs and Tetris? Then you're probably gonna love Flowstone Saga. This plays like any other 16-bit RPG you've ever seen where you'll explore environments and talk with characters, but then for battles, you'll engage in fast-paced Tetris-like gameplay. And what's cool is as you progress through the game, you'll be able to level up and gain new abilities that will help you out in combat that look really neat. This is also one I've had my eye on for a little while now, and I absolutely cannot wait to play it when it drops later this year. I found out about Whalefall during the Whitethorn Games Winter Showcase and was instantly intrigued by it. This is a visual novel meets turn-based RPG with a splash of SRPG. As you're on your way to save the world, you'll need friends to recruit into your army, and this is where the SRPG elements come to play. You'll also build romances, make enemies, and fight while enjoying over 10 hours of voice acting within this visual novel. This game seems to be doing a little bit too much, but regardless, I'm definitely excited to see how it's all gonna unfold. One company I'm so glad to see back with a vengeance 
Legends is level five, and one game that's supposedly coming out this year from them is Megaton Musashi Wired. Now in this game, you play as a mech pilot and you can customize your own giant robot to your heart's content from the way it looks to the way it plays. Now combat plays out in these fast paced, real time action combat battles, and you'll have nearly endless amounts of ways to customize your robot and decide how you wanna play. And what's cool about this updated re-release is that you can play cross play across all the different platforms. You can play with your friends and tackle missions or even fight in 3v3 battles. And for you old school mecha fans, there's even some cool cameos that you can expect. So if you're a fan of giant anime robots, then you probably want to give this one a go. Cry Machina is an action RPG where a mechanical girls strives to survive, this was so hard to say, <laughs> in a post-apocalyptic world to become real humans. And they actually have no idea what that means. You have three playable characters in this fast-paced action RPG where you can customize your weapons and challenge your foes. You also have a base to return to so you can relax and enjoy light-hearted conversations between the girls. This reminds me a lot of Blue Reflection Second Light if you played that one, so I'm definitely interested in it. One indie RPG I think could be the hidden gem of the year is Sacrifier. Now what grabs you immediately is its gorgeous art style, seemingly inspired by Square's HD 2D art style, everything from its pixel art characters to its 3D environments. And it seems to have a really unique combat system. It's real-time action, but kind of on a 2D plane. Think like the earlier Tales of games like Tales of Destiny. And speaking of Tales, the music is being composed by Motoi Sakuraba, who did a lot of the music for the Tales games as well as Star Ocean. So if you like hidden gems and want one to keep your eye on that could be a huge hit, definitely don't forget about Sacrifier. Deca Police, or is it Dessa Police? I have no idea, is a new RPG from the wonderful team at level 5. This is a crime suspense RPG, and we have a detective hunting down criminals in a huge open world crime ridden city. This detective also travels back and forth between physical and virtual reality. I like the evidence collection system where you have a case board to help you solve cases and the possibility of having to use force to make arrests, so you'll have to enter into combat to take them down. I love everything that I've seen about this game so far, so again, pretty excited for this one. Now one Falcon game that was almost lost to time and I thought we'd never get is The Legend of Nayuta Boundless Trails. Thankfully, it's finally coming west this year for the first time in September. Now despite the name Trails in the title, don't feel like you need to play the other nine games. This sort of sits as a spin-off game. Now in terms of gameplay, it plays a lot like the PSP slash Vita era ease games like E7 and Memories of Celseta. So if you like that quick action combat jumping around, then this will probably be one right up your alley. And again, what's really nice is this is modernized for modern consoles with better frame rate, better visuals, and all kinds of other cool stuff. I'm low key pretty excited for this one, and I think you should be too. I've had my eye on Moonstone Island since its announcement, and this game just keeps getting better with every trailer update. This is a creature collecting life sim set in an open world with over 100 islands to explore. You'll meet new friends, go on dates, build your home, grow crops and flowers, brew potions, travel using a broom, balloon, or maybe even a glider if that's what you fancy, tame and befriend wild spirits, explore dungeons, and so much more. There's so much content to be enjoyed here and this has lots of potential. The Disgaea series is back and better than ever with Disgaea 7 Vows of the Virtual. It retains its signature wacky sense of humor with a new 3D art style establishing Disgaea 6. Now, what I like about this entry is that it seems to be very inspired by Edo era Japan with everything from the environments to the character designs. And while this is a Switch specific video, it's good to know that it'll be launching on all platforms at the same time for those that want better performance elsewhere. Either way, if you need more wacky strategy RPG goodness in your life, then you can look forward to Disgaea 7 this fall. I wanted to give a quick mention for Fate slash Samurai Remnant. The trailer doesn't really tell us much, neither does the website, so we have no idea what kind of combat or what, pretty much what this game is. There's speculation whether it will fall into the Souls-like genre, maybe a real-time action RPG, or probably a warrior style of game, we have no idea. So I guess keep your eyes peeled until we learn a little bit more about it. The Bad and Kaido series is a pair of little-known GameCube JRPGs that are finally getting a modern remaster. Now for those that are unfamiliar with these games, these were known for their beautiful art styles and unique card battling mechanics. You'll collect cards throughout your adventure and you can tinker with your deck to your heart's content to fit your playstyle. And obviously this remaster will have all kinds of updated features like better resolution, better frame rate, and other quality of life features. These are very obscure JRPGs that I thought we would never get remasters for, but I'm so glad that they're coming so more people can enjoy them. East End Nordics has been making the rounds with fans of the series over the moon excited about it, and it's coming to the Switch in Japan, and hopefully soon enough to the West. 
This entry takes place immediately after the events of East 2, with Adol on his way to Salsetta when he was 17. The game is introducing completely new gameplay mechanics where you can have a cross-action system that allows the player to fight using two modes which you can interchange with the press of a button. I did not enjoy Ease 8 at all and I dropped it rather quickly. Let's hear the keyboard warriors telling me how dare you not like that game. Regardless, I'm still excited for East 10. Carrying on. Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes gives you a modern take on a classic JRPG experience as you control over 100 playable characters through a war-torn world. The 2.5D art style looks amazing and combat will be turn-based where you take control of 6 characters. The game aims to draw you into every fight with diverse battlefields and obstacles present. This one also introduces a guild system, farming, opening up a cafeteria and more, so I'm intrigued to learn more about it. So you can one and two are perhaps two of the best retro JRPGs ever made, and they're getting the HD treatment later this year. Now, for the uninitiated, the Suikoden games are very famous for their ability to let you recruit 108 characters in each game. Yes, you heard that right, 108 characters. Now, to be clear, not all are playable characters. Some are shopkeepers back at your home base, but still, it was a very unique mechanic that almost no game does. Not to mention, it has a great turn-based combat style with up to six characters in your party with two layers. It's really strategic and fun. In my opinion, there are fewer RPGs more deserving of an HD collection, and I can't wait to revisit these games later this year. I've had to leave the best for last, and this is a thousand percent fantasy life. I've talked about it a thousand times, and let's make it a thousand and one. This is another amazing game from level 5 where you live on a ruined island and get to travel between the past and present to unravel its mysteries. And if you're new to the series, basically you choose one of different lives. We don't know how many, but in the 3DS one we had 12, and each one gives you different abilities and perks like being able to cook or using certain weapons or maybe crafting different objects. But in this one, you can also terraform, but we, again, don't really know that much. I mean, we're running off of speculations at this point of what is available and not available. But still, this is my most anticipated Switch JRPG of 2023. I am beyond the moon excited for it. We probably missed out on a ton more Switch JRPGs coming out this year, so don't forget to let us know your favorite in the comment section. Also, a massive thank you for Taylor for being a part of this. Check out his channel for everything JRPGs. He has an awesome channel. Stay bubbly, stay positive, and I'll see your gorgeous self in the next one. Bye! Thank you to my Patreon and YouTube channel Bubblies who continue to support the content that I make here. Links to both are in the pinned comment. And a special shout out goes to the game dimension, Faye, Jacob, Stephanie, Steven, Dark One, and Jake Logan for going the extra mile. Y'all are bubbly awesome.